Today, the Tennessee Titans seek a win over the Los Angeles Chargers. We prime time, man. We try to get a dub today. So we're going to come with it. We're going to come with it, baby. City need it. We've been tested to our limits. After reviewing the play, the runner lost the ball prior to crossing the goal line. There's a clear recovery by the defense. It's a touchdown. Listen, man, it's Kevin Byer here. Sometimes you trade your own luck, man. We had a blade of grass to play with, and we kept playing hard, man. One of the greatest games in Titans history, man. You can count on that. Titans Blitz presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. I'm Lance Smith here with Mark Mary Annie. How are you, sir? Hey, it's oh, good to see you. It is so, so fun doing this show after a big win. So fun, man. It is. This is the, coming off a win, this is nice. Big win. Big this, win. This is Everybody's nice. Everybody's positive, all the optimism. So good. I love it. Thanks I, for having me. I'm walking three feet off the ground. All right. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's kick off the show, shall we? Uh, we got a lot to talk about. It is fun talking about these wins. No doubt. All right. That's so we best. got uh, four downs with Mark right here. So, this game, man, uh, this was the game. Tannehill's getting the start, and what a start it was. That's right. We've been watching our defense shut guys down all year, um, and we were looking for a little spark on offense. Ryan Tannehill comes in. You knew that he would be ready for the challenge, but you really didn't know he would come out and do what he did, throw for over 300 yards and lead this offense to a big win here uh, at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, 23 of 29, 312 yards, a couple of TDs. The, the pick he had was a floater from when he got hit, but still, uh, dynamic game. I mean, he was on fire. Throwing in some tight windows. That's right. We saw athleticism from him um, all over the field, moving out of the pocket, extending plays, throwing into tight windows, throwing in tight windows in the red zone. Really saw it all. He led this team, led the offense with some conviction. Um, really, really excited and, and kind of pumped for uh, what this could mean for this offense as we progress in the season here. Sure, sure. When did it, when you were watching the game and when did it set in for you like, oh, he's He's, he's, he's on a mission. I'll tell you, it was the first drive it hit me when he hit Johnny Smith, who was absolutely not open. He threw a back shoulder ball, defender didn't see it, uh, put it on him where only Johnny could make the play, and I thought, all right, man, he is, he's out there gunslinging, and uh, this could be a good day for the offense, and it turned out to be good, and, and he just went with it from there and, and finishes with over 300 yards. Absolutely. Also, uh, hats off to Johnny for that because Delaney got uh, dinged up. That's right. Tweaked his ankle, so uh, Johnny had to step up. All right, well, let's, uh, let's move to second down, talking about these receivers because we talk about Tannehill uh, stepping up. Well, the receivers really stepped up, too, because – I mean, they were coming back to the ball, really running decisive routes. Uh, between Davis and Brown, they combined for uh, 12 receptions, 144 yards, and a touchdown. Humphreys, a clutch on third down. That's right. When, I mean, when did the Titans become a receiver's game? Listen, we know we have a stable with these guys. We know that they're overflowing with potential. Uh, one of the key things that I think Tannehill did was hit these guys in stride so that these receivers uh, could go out after the catch and make plays. Tajay Sharp gets involved with a big touchdown. Yeah. Adam Humphreys on third down. I mean, there was he was spreading the ball around to these receivers, and they were making plays. Again, this is no secret, man. When these guys are playing good, we yeah. can make plays. This, this playmaking crew is up for the task each and every week, and, and uh, that's why I think that's why I'm so excited because if we can get these guys the ball, yeah. they can do the rest. Now, would you say, I mean, uh, much like a, uh, I guess, a, a rookie sitting on the bench watching the starter do his thing and then coming into play? I mean, Tannehill's obviously no rookie. He's a starter in his own right, but he's had all season to watch our offense do what it does, see what's missing. I mean, that that just helped him. Right? Yeah, and he's I think ready to go. I think jumping in the game like last, you know, two weeks ago, um, as the backup is a different mindset. This week, he's got the full week to prepare. He gets all the reps in practice, gets mm -hmm. to prepare for the defenses, um, and he showed that this is why John Robinson went in the offseason, picked him up. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a young guy. This is a this is a KG vet with a ton of NFL experience, um, and and kudos to to the front office for getting this guy because he was ready he was ready to play and he, he could be the guy to lead this team you know for the rest of the season and take us where we ch we're trying to go uh, the receiver in you position yeah. you know so well uh, eye on anybody anybody really standing out I mean how's the rookie looking for you I'll tell AJ. you what man AJ Brown continues to impress me each and every week and uh, he's he does the little things he prepares 
Uh, he, he makes the catches. He gets the run after the catch. He's extremely physical. Uh, usually with a young player, you have a little bit of the deer in the headlights look, but it looks like he's, he's understanding the game. Uh, he, he has no wasted movement. He's, he's very efficient. And I'll tell you what, it's exciting to watch him and Corey Davis work because you got to pick your poison. Yeah. Who, who are you going to stop? And, and they both can hurt you. Well, speaking, about, speaking of uh, young guys and picking your poison, let's move on to uh, third down right here. The 19th pick overall in the draft coming off ACL surgery, eight months removed from it, shows up and shows up big. Jeffrey Simmons was a game wrecker and only played 33% of the defensive snaps. A monster, a freak, <laughs> a, d a difference maker. Here's I mean, a I don't, sack. First sack of his career. I don't know how to even describe this guy. I have so much excitement watching him, and, and I can't think of another guy who had more hype and more buildup, and then he lived up to it in every stretch of the imagination. This guy is going to make a difference every play. I've been so impressed by his uh, overcoming adversity, his yeah. off-the-field stuff, um, his, his, his interviews, his attitude. And, you know, I, I got to be honest, when, when we called his name on the draft and, and realized that he, we may not get to see him this year, yeah. I was very, you know, yeah, I was upset by it. And his coming out party this weekend was <laughs> everything I could have ever imagined. So I apologize. <laughs> I, I didn't know he, this guy is the true definition of a freak of nature. And there are so many plays that he has left to make. And he's just going times. to uh, accent everybody else's play around him. Casey's, Wakes, Harold Landry, Sharif Finch, everybody. We are halfway, almost halfway through the season, and we have one of the def best defenses in the league, and now we add a difference maker like this guy, like yeah. Jeffrey Simmons, and you're just going, this could be nasty. And, and he does. He makes a difference every play. He's bench-pressing guards and interior yeah. linemen, um, and for a young guy to do that is extremely impressive. Well, one play in particular that he bench-pressed a guard on, the right guard in particular, moving on to fourth down, the goal line stand. How was it? Did you love it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You, you, you got a 10-point lead, and all of a sudden we could be losing this game. They get multiple shots at the goal line, and this defense stood up like I've never seen before, and it was Simmons who stood up that right guard and forced Gordon to go wide, and Wesley Woodyard chopped that ball out like a lumberjack. You heard wow. Kevin Byard in the intro saying that this is going to be one of the greatest games. I'll tell you what, they're going to talk about this goal line stand yeah. for a very, very long time. Our fearless leader, Wesley Woodyard, knocks the ball out. But if we watch that play in slow-mo, there's Jeffrey Simmons blowing up that right guard, yeah. pushing him four yards deep into the end zone on the second play of the in from the one-inch line. Yeah. And here we go, a rookie coming in there and making a difference-making play, saving the game, getting us the win, and potentially pole vaulting us into you know the season down down into the playoff stretch and now we're one game back from the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I mean you know our defense is good, you know our team is good, you know what we've got but, but seeing that happen, knowing that we can do that. A goal line stand, I mean it gives me chills talking about it. I've watched that play over and over again. And one more thing, uh, one more uh, man I'd like to talk about is the 12th man. The fans never let up the entire time that we were down on that goal line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys yeah, you guys. That crowd just when, like, the voice in the back of your head is thinking, well, we gave it a good shot, they didn't let up. Absolute ruckus. It was a full team effort. Offense, defense, special teams, and the 12th man, man. He played a huge role. It was so fun to watch. It, it fun really to be a part was. of. It was so exciting to be there. And, uh, and we, you know, we got another home game this weekend, so we'll be talking about that. That's right. Uh, it was exciting. Keep that noise up. Let me hear it again. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. You know, uh, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on your car insurance. And with that, we'll go to break with our Geico Fast 15. Stick around. Titans Blitz. We'll be right back. Shotgun, Rivers to throw it. Stepping up. Sack! Big Jeff! His first career sack. Fires to the back of the end zone. Man is there. Ball is caught. Touchdown! Tight! Tajay Sharp! Yeah! Welcome back to Titans Blitz, presented by Farm Your Health Plans. We'll take a little break right now. It's halftime on the show. Break from the X's and O's, that is. You're with us. Uh, we're going to talk a little rock and a hard place right now. So we ask our Titans players you know, a question every week, this or that, you know, would you rather have it? So I'm going to ask you, think about this answer. Okay. We asked them if they would rather have uh, social media, but no movies or TV forever, or you get all the movies and TV you want, but no social media. So you think about this, you can ponder okay. it too. <laughs> this might be an age thing too as well. But right now, here's what our, ti our Titans players had to say about it in Rock and a Hard Place presented by Snickers. Uh, 
Uh, I could give up social media pretty easily. I'm a pretty big fan of movies and TV, so I would definitely want to keep that. Well, I'm pretty bad at both. I don't watch television and I'm not on social media very often. You know, I try to be cool in real life rather than, uh, you know, on the web. So um, I'd probably be okay with either one of those. Never use social media again, dude. I already hate it. I love it, but I hate it. I'm a huge contradiction, dude. I'm like a, I'm like a starburst, dude. It's terrible. Okay, I'll say, wait, let me try to do this. I'll never watch a movie or TV show again because I can just get on social media and, and find it and see what they're talking about. Maybe watch it. You know, they got all these apps. Would that be the Netflix social media? Is it, no? Damn. Never use social media. I'm a big movie guy. I've never used uh, social media out. I watch movies and TV. Social media out the door. Gotta watch my movies. <laughs> All right, so there you go. See, it is an age thing. I, I think the, the older guys are like, they can do without social media. Got totally. Have, so where are you on that? I think I'm the same way. I think for even pr productivity standpoint, sure. I think I should probably give up social media. So <laughs> it, it, wouldn't, it would be better for everybody if, uh, if we gave up a little social media in our lives. I mean, I get that, and I feel the same way. I mean, kids these days and their Twitters, uh, but yeah, I, I gotta have my movies. I mean, it is it is a tough one, and when you talk about forever, it's like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I have fun surfing the social media w web, but uh, I could probably give it up. I gotta have my movies, and without TV, you can't watch Titans Blitz. All right, uh, very important. Corey Davis actually teamed up with uh, Farm Bureau Health Plans uh, to work with uh, Nashville Second Harvest Food Bank recently. This is a very cool thing. I love when the Titans can give back to the community, so check this out. And on the other side, we'll talk about this game coming up, our next home game against the Buccaneers. But right now, here's Corey Davis. here helping with the backpack program. It helps kids that maybe go home on the weekends from school that don't have food. Farm Bureau, obviously uh, agricultural roots, feeding people is kind of our heritage. So it kind of made sense. We started doing uh, work with Second Harvest about three years ago. We think it's important that we help feed those that are hungry here in Middle Tennessee. But um, Second Harvest, just um, making some backpacks for younger kids. I kind of had something similar to this when I was little. We didn't really have much, so we'd always have to come to a pantry and, um, you know, get canned foods or whatever we can, but it means something to me just to come back and um, do whatever we can to, you know, help the youth. Today we had Corey Davis, great guy. I slowed him down a little bit trying to pass things down to him because he was pretty pretty quick, but uh, anyway, it's great to have him here and show his interest and, again, his desire to help uh, give back to the community. We do a, a lot of things with the Titans, so I think bringing all of us together, uh, Second Harvest, uh, Farm Bureau, and the Titans makes a lot of sense. I mean, we came out here, we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, they're a blast to work with, and um, I'd definitely love to come out here again. Welcome back to the Titans Blitz, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Lance Smith here, back with Mark Mariani, and let's uh, let's talk about this. Got a two-minute warning here on the show, so we got a game coming up. We're talking about stacking wins. We're coming off a win. Getting another win, that's what this league is all about. we got to right. build on this win, and uh, it's doable against Tampa Bay. Right? Another home game here at Nissan Stadium, yeah. and uh, just all about gaining momentum and getting the snowball rolling down the hill and uh, yeah. making some momentum happen. All right, first key to victory, pressure uh, Jameis Winston because – the dude's coughing it up quite a bit. <laughs> well, there's a couple of things we know about Jameis Winston. He can get hot, yeah. and he can also throw you the ball a bunch. Yeah, like keep, <laughs> keep this in mind. This is a team that put up 55 and beat the Rams. That's right. So recently, and so then, they can do that. And then he goes back last week uh, before the bye and throw, gives the ball away six times. Right. I think five picks and a fumble. And here's some of those uh, <laughs> great highlights here. So we want to see more of this at Nissan Stadium this weekend. You know, our defense is nasty. They make them work for everything. And we would love to see Jameis Winston have a, have a miserable experience here on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like even if you can't get him to the ground because he is mobile, it, like it, it's going to present more opportunity for our secondary. I, I'm just going to lay it out there right now. Logan Ryan, Kevin Byard, both with picks. Just going to say that. Just put I that like out that. there. Just I like lay that. I like that prediction. There. there it is. Bold prediction. Uh, next key to victory, uh, don't give up the deep ball because going back to what you were saying about they can air it out. That's right. Uh, this team is bringing a bunch of weapons and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans along with OJ Howard at tight end yeah. are very very big playmakers and we got to shut these guys down. Uh, you just listed off Logan Ryan and KB in the in the back 
in the secondary for us. We're going to have a tough challenge with these guys. And uh, nothing that they're not going to be up to the task for, but these guys present a major challenge on Sunday, and they've been doing it all year. You, uh, you said something. Uh, so so uh, Chris Godwin averaging seven receptions, 110 yards, and a TD averaging per game That's through right. six games. Also averaging 15 yards a reception. Evans averaging 17 yards a reception. O.J. Howard, 13 yards a reception. They catch the long ball. This is one of the best three, threesomes in the league at, yeah. at, at, you know, for their weapons, and Jameis Winston can get hot. Uh, but we also have one of the best defenses in the league and the right. best secondary. Uh, Chris Godwin, undercover, one of the best receivers out there. So they got some ammo coming in, but we're ready to shut them down. You said something to me before the show started uh, behind the scenes that uh, right. Ryan Fitzpatrick, a couple years Titan, back, yep. buddy of yours, That's right. played with Chris Godwin, and what did he say? He said Chris Godwin is one of the best, most athletic uh, receivers he's ever played with. He yeah. does everything well from the short routes to long routes. He makes every catch. Right. Uh, everyone's talking about Mike Evans, and here on the other side, you got this playmaker, Chris Godwin. So right. they'll, be, they'll know where he's at on Sunday. So uh, just real quickly, then the third key to this, I think you got to keep Chris Godwin and James Winston off the field, and we got to continue this offensive development. We got to put drives together. That's right. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come in here with the number one ranked rushing defense in the league and the 32nd ranked passing defense in the yeah, league. It's a that's huge very discrepancy. Lopsided. That's right. So we're going we're gonna to put together a good game plan again. Uh, we have one of the best, most physical running backs in the league. He yeah. runs downhill. It'll be strength for strength there. Uh, but we, like I said, we gained a little momentum, a little confidence this past weekend against the Chargers, and we just need to keep that going. Nothing outside the box. Just get Tannehill going early and get the, get the ball in the hands of these receivers, these playmakers like we talked about, uh, and good things will happen. All, all, all things come together to make a great win on Sunday. Yeah, I, I believe it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen, That's but right. you're right. I mean, there is a formula to it. You've got to stick to it. All right, uh, parents out there with uh, youth playing football, listen to this. This is very cool. Parents Football Clinic happening Monday, November 4th, 6 to 9 p.m. here at Nissan Stadium. Uh, it's going to include sessions on strength and conditioning, proper equipment, treating or avoiding injuries, ton of info for parents, and it's all free unless you want to drop me some money. Uh, it's uh, no, it's a great event because I mean, you know, this is it, it's a tough sport. It's a very physical sport. You got your kids playing. If you're worried about your kids and you don't know how to coach them yourselves, this is the place you want to be. Uh, and it's a very cool thing that the Titans are putting on. So I dig that. All right, we got more Titans Blitz on the other side. I got a question for this guy right here talking about social media. So a lot of pressure. Stick around, Titans Blitz. We'll be right back. Titans Blitz presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Lance Mark back with you. It is now overtime here on the show and time for Wendy's hot take of the week. So, Mark, I ask you this. We were talking about social media earlier. Um, in this day and age, after every game, there are some really well-informed fans out there. And I'm not just opinions being put out of line, but they're breaking down plays. They're using the All-22 film. And how much of that, if any, does it have any influence whatsoever on our players? Maybe do our coaches privately, maybe secretly look at that <laughs> stuff and go, huh? I think I think all of the above. I think that players take a peek at it sometimes. Some players more active than others. Um, I think that there are a lot of fans out there that are educated and informed, and there are some that are not as well. But I think that you know overall, what's important to remember is that most of the time you see these guys. Um, from behind the face mask mm -hmm. and what I love about social media for fans is that players become more accessible and you can see get to know guys more personally you get to see with Corey Davis out in the community AJ Brown was out today at a school visit I saw on social media right. things like that are really beneficial yeah. now guys picking apart your play and, and critiquing you and you want to fire back at somebody sitting you know behind their cell phone it happens yeah. um, but it's a new it's a new day and age it's not going away yeah. so it's definitely something players got to get used to but well, play from a player perspective you have guys in the league that grew up with it grew up You're with right. Twitter grew up with social media it's just a fabric of of their every day all right well uh, hey man it's good to see you again thanks for being here always fun Sitting after a win man I, and I hope we do this again next week after a win let's go get let's yeah. go get another W you gotta be week. loud again we need you one more time this weekend this Sunday Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming to Nissan Stadium and they're going down because we got a stack of win right <laughs> loud and proud right loud and proud tighten up. Thank you for watching Titans Blitz. I'm Lance Smith. This is Mark Dariani. See you next week, y'all.